ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम ऑल टू टुडे रीडिंग फ्रॉम द नेक्स्ट ऑफ डिवोशन बाय भक्तिविदान स्वामी प्रभात शिव प्रभात की जय ओरिजिनली बाय रूप गोस्वामी भक्ति रसामिता सिंधु That was the original title. We will begin from chapter thirty-one. Our reading today. Ukam karoti vachalam pangum langhe te kirim yat kripa kamham mande shri gurum din taenam parmanand madham shri chetaneeshwaram hari nam tatsa. So these are the last three chapters of the part two of the book. Chapter thirty one. Additional symptoms. All the previously mentioned thirty three symptoms of ecstatic love are called the abhichari, or disturbing. All these symptoms refer to apparently disturbed conditions, but even in such disturbed conditions, there is acute ecstatic love for Krishna. These symptoms, however, can be divided into three groups: first class, second class, and third. There are many disturbing symptoms in ecstatic love, such as envy, anxiety, pride, jealousy, confusion. Cowardliness, forgiveness, impatience, hankering, regret, doubtfulness, and impudence. These are included in the thirty-three conditions of ecstatic love. Shri Rupa Goswami has very nicely analyzed the different kinds of disturbing symptoms, and although it is very difficult to find the exact English equivalents for many Sanskrit words used here, his analysis will now be presented. When one becomes malicious upon seeing another's advancement of life. His state of mind is generally called envy. When one becomes frightened at seeing a lightning bolt in the sky, that fearfulness brings on anxiety. Therefore, fearfulness and anxiety may be taken as one. One's desire to hide his real mentality is called avahita or concealment, and desire to exhibit superiority is called pride. Both of these may be classified under pretension. In a Pretentious attitude, both avahita and pride, are to be found. One's inability to tolerate an offence committed by another is called amarasya, and one's inability to tolerate the opulence of another is called jealousy. Jealousy and amarasya are both caused by intolerance. One's ability to establish the correct import of a word may be called conclusiveness. And before such a conclusive determination of import, there must be thoughtful. consideration therefore the act of consideration is present during the establishment of a conclusion when one presents himself as ignorant his attitude is called humility and when there is absence of enthusiasm it is called cowardice therefore in humility there is sometimes cowardice also when the mind is steadfast it is called enduring and one's ability to tolerate other offenses is also called endurance therefore forgiveness and endurance can be synonymous anxiousness for time to pass is called impatience and when one sees something wonderful one is said to be struck with wonder impatience may be caused by being struck with wonder and so impatience and being struck with wonder can be synonymous when anxiety is in its dormant stage it is called hankering therefore anxiety and hankering can also be synonymous when one becomes regretful for some offense his feeling is called bashfulness in this way bashfulness and regret can be synonymous and regret can be synonymous doubtfulness is one of the aspects of argument after exhibiting impudence one becomes restless therefore restlessness and impudence can be synonymous when all such symptoms are included in ecstatic love they are called sanchari sanchari or continuously existing ecstatic symptoms all of these symptoms are transcendental and they are exhibited in different ways acting and interacting under different conditions they are like the reciprocation of love between the lover and the beloved when a person is envious or defamed there may be a change in the color of the body 
This may be classified as vibhav or sub-ecstasy. Sometimes illusion, collapse and strong anxiety are also considered to be vibhav. When there are many such symptoms, they can simply be grouped together under ecstatic love. Shirupa Goswami says that fried sleep, fatigue, laziness and madness of intoxications are sometimes grouped under the continuous symptoms of ecstatic love and they are due to strong attraction, false argument, determination, steadiness, remembrance, joyfulness, ignorance, humility and unconsciousness are also group of different symptoms of ecstatic love. Dependence is also grouped under the ecstatic love and this can be divided into superior dependence and inferior dependence. The direct differentiations between superior and inferior dependence are ascertained by Rupa Goswami and will be presented in due course. One devotee exclaimed, Oh, I cannot see the district of Mathura even though by simply hearing the name of Mathura, the hairs of my body are standing up. I cannot see the place. So what use are my eyes? This statement reveals a strong anxiety to see the district of Mathura resulting from a strong attachment to Krishna. There is another instance of this strong attachment for Krishna expressed by Bhima when he began to murmur. My arms are just like thunderbolts, but despite these arms, I could not smash Shishupal while he was blaspheming Krishna. Therefore, of what use are these strong arms? In this instant, Bhima became very angry. And being influenced by such anger, his hopelessness became a cause for strong attachment to Krishna. This instance can be described as strong attachment for Krishna in anger. When Krishna witnessed the universal form, sorry, when Arjun witnessed the universal form of Krishna, whose dazzling teeth were practically devouring the very existence of the universe, Arjun's mouth became dried up. At that time, Arjun forgot himself and could not understand that he was Arjun. Krishna's friend, although he was always dependent upon Krishna's mercy, this incident is an example of inferior dependence. Sometimes ghastly activities also support strong ecstatic love for Krishna. This state of mind is called ecstatic fearfulness under illusion. In the 10th canto, 23rd chapter, verse 40 of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is the following statement by Brahmanas who were performing sacrifices. We have all been born into three advantageous conditions. We are in high Brahmana families. We have ceremoniously received the sacred thread and we are also properly initiated by a spiritual master. But alas, in spite of these advantages, we are condemned. Even our observance of Brahmacharya is condemned. The Brahmanas thus began to condemn their own activities. They realized that in spite of being so elevated by birth, education and culture, they still were under the spell of the illusory energy. They also admitted that even great yogis who are not devotees of the Lord are covered by the influence of material energy. This kind of hopelessness felt by the Brahmanas who are performing ritualistic ceremony shows practically no attachment for Krishna. There is another hopelessness, however, which shows attachment for Krishna. When the bull demon attacked the damsels of Raja, they began to cry out, Dear Krishna, please save us, we are now gone. This is hopelessness with attachment to Krishna. When the Keshi demon was assassinated by Krishna, Krishna Kamsa became hopeless. He said, Keshi Dattya was as dear to me as my own life. But he has been killed by some coward boy who is crude, uneducated and ignorant in fighting. Even though I have defeated the king of heaven without difficulty, still I do not know the value of life. Because this hopelessness has a slight touch of attraction for Krishna, it is considered to be a reflection of ecstatic love in hopelessness. Kamsa once rebuked Akrur by saying, You are such a fool that you are accepting a coward boy to be the supreme personality of Godhead, simply because he has defeated some harmless water snake. The boy may have lifted one pebble called Govardhan Hill, but what is more surprising than that is your statement that this boy is the personality of Godhead. This is an instance of a maliciously opposing element caused by hopelessness in ecstatic love for Krishna. One devotee tried to console a Kadamba tree when the tree was lamenting because Krishna had not touched even its shadow. 
The devotee said, My dear Kadambatri, do not be worried. Just after defeating the Kaliya snake in the Yamuna River, Krishna will come and satisfy your desire. This is an instance of appropriate, inappropriate hopelessness and ecstatic love for Krishna. Garud, the eagle carrier of Vishnu, once said, Who can be more pure than I? Where is there a second bird like me, so able and competent? Krishna may not like me, he may not wish to join my party, but still he has to take advantage of my wings. This is an instance of hopelessness in the neutral mood of ecstatic love. The symptoms of ecstatic love are sometimes grouped under four headings, namely generation, conjunction, aggregation and satisfaction. Krishna once told Radharani, my dear friend, when you try to meet me alone in the morning, your friend Mekhala remained hungry with envy. Just look at her. When Krishna was joking with Radharani in such way, in this way, Radharani moved her beautiful eyebrows crossly. Rupa Goswami prays that everyone may become blessed by this movement of Srimati Radharani's eyebrows. This is an instance of the generation of malice in ecstatic love of Krishna. One night after the Putra demon had been killed, baby Krishna could be seen playing upon her breast. Upon seeing this, Yashoda became stunned for some time. This is an example of a conjunction of various symptoms of ecstatic love. The conjunction can be auspicious or inauspicious. That the Putra demon had been killed was auspicious. But that Krishna was playing on her breast in the dead of night with no one had to help him in case of trouble was inauspicious. Yashoda was caught between auspiciousness and inauspiciousness. After Krishna had just learned to walk, he was going in and out of the house very frequently. Yashoda became surprised and said, This child is so rest too restless and cannot be controlled. He is incessantly going about the neighborhood of Gokul, Vrindavan. And then he is coming back inside the house. I see that the child is very fearless, but in spite of his fearlessness, I, I am becoming more and more afraid of his falling into some danger. This again is an instance of the conjunction of the two opposing elements. The child was very fearless, but at the same time, Ishoda was becoming fearful of some danger. Her danger is the cause, and Ishoda's feelings are in conjunction of the two opposing symptoms. In other words, Ishoda was feeling both happiness and doubt, or growing fear. When Devki, the mother of Krishna, saw her son very jubilant in the presence of the wrestlers in Kamsa's arena, Two kinds of tears were simultaneously gliding down her cheeks. Sometimes her tears were warm and sometimes they were cold. This is an instance of a conjunction of jubilation and lamentation due to different causes of ecstatic love. Once when Srimati Radharani was standing on the bank of the Yamuna River in the forest of Vrindavan, she was attacked by Krishna who was stronger than she although she externally expressed a disturbed mood from the incident. Within herself, she was smiling and feeling great satisfaction. Externally, she moved her eyebrows and made a show of rejecting Krishna. In this mood, Radharani looked very beautiful and Sri Rupa Goswami glorifies her beauty. This is an instance of exhibiting varying feelings in the ecstatic love, although the cause is only one, Krishna. Cause is one, only Krishna. Sometimes there were great festivals in the house of Nand Maharaj and all the inhabitants of Vrindavan would assemble for these festivals. During one such festival, Srimati Radharani was seen wearing a golden necklace given her by Krishna. This was immediately detected by Mother Yashoda as well as Radharani's mother because the necklace was too long for Radharani's neck. At the same time, Radharani could see Krishna nearby as well as, as, well as her own husband Abhimanyu. So all of these things combined to make Radharani feel very much ashamed. And with her face shriveled, she began to look very beautiful. And in this case, there was a combination of bashfulness, anger, jubilation, and lamentation. This is an instance of an aggregate of symptoms of ecstatic love. Krishna once said, What harm can this boy do to me? He has no power. The next moment, Krishna was, Kamsa was informed that all of his friends had been killed by the boy. Then Kamsa began to think in perplexity. Shall I go immediately and surrender unto him? 
But how can a great warrior do this? The next moment he thought, why should I be afraid of him? There are still many, still so many wrestlers standing to support me. But the next moment he began to consider, the boy is certainly not common because he has lifted Kobo than Hill and is in his left hand so that. So what can I? So, but how can a great warrior do this? The next moment he thought, why should I be afraid of him? There are still so many wrestlers standing to support me. But the next moment he began to consider, the boy is certainly not common because he has lifted Govardhan Hill and is in with his left hand. So what can I do in this connection? Let me go to Vrindavan and inflict pains on all the residents there. But still I cannot even go out because my heart is trembling from fear. of this boy. The condition of Kamsa's mind reveals an instance of pride, lamentation, humility, determination, remembrance, doubtfulness and barren fear. Actually eight different symptoms comprised the mental condition of the mental condition of Kamsa. This is another instance of an aggregate symptoms in hopeless ecstatic sorry, ecstatic love. One householder devotee once said, My Lord, I am so wretched that these two eyes are never desiring to see the glory cities, city of Madhura, therefore my eyes are actually condemned. I am nicely educated, but my education has simply been used in government service. I have not considered formidable time stronger than anyone else, which creates and annihilates everything. To whom shall I leave all of my wealth and fortune? I am becoming older and older. What shall I do? Shall I execute devotional service from here at home? This I cannot do because my mind is being attracted by the transcendental land of Vrindavan. This is an instance of hopelessness, pride, doubt, patience, lamentation, determination and eagerness. An aggregation of seven different symptoms in ecstatic love for Krishna. There is a proverb in Sanskrit which says disappointment gives rise to the greatest satisfaction. In other words, when one sentiment or ambition becomes too great and is not fulfilled until after seemingly hopeless tribulation, that is taken as the greatest satisfaction. Once the cowherd boys in Vrindavan were vainly searching after Krishna for a long time and for that reason their faces became blackened and their complexions appeared faded just then they could hear on the hill a faint vibration from Krishna's flute. Immediately all of them became very much gladdened. This is an instance of satisfaction in the midst of disappointment. Srila Rupa Goswami says that although he has no expert knowledge about the sounds and meanings and mellows of the symptoms of ecstatic love, he has tried to give some example of different varieties of love of Krishna. He further oh, I lost, lost the thread where I was. Anyway, we'll just repeat this. Uh, yeah, we were saying that Rupa Goswami says that although he has no expert knowledge about the sounds and meanings and mellows of the symptoms of ecstatic love, he has tried to give some examples of different varieties of love for Krishna. He further states that the 33 disturbing symptoms of ecstatic love plus eight other symptoms all taken together equal 41 symptoms. Primary symptoms of ecstatic love. These symptoms create transformations of bodily activities as well as movements of the senses. All of them can be accepted as different feelings of the heart. Sometimes some of the feelings are quite natural. Sometimes some of the feelings are just temporary appearances. These, those symptoms which are very natural always remain both within and without the devotee. As one can detect the color of dye, a cloth was soaked in by looking at the cloth. 
So simply by understanding the different signs of these symptomatic features, one can understand the actual position. In other words, attachment for Krishna is one, but because there exist different kinds of devotees, such at attachment is manifested in many varieties as clothing tinged red appears red so the temporary appearance of a certain type of feeling can be detected or observed by a specific ecstatic symptom in fact all the different humors and mellows of the devotees produce various specific feelings within the mind and according to these differences the symptoms of ecstatic love appear in different forms and degrees. Sorry. If one's heart is highly elevated, grave and magnanimous, or if one's heart is rough and crude, different symptoms of ecstatic love will appear. Influenced by the condition of the heart, actually people cannot generally understand such different qualities of mentality. But when one's heart is very soft or gentle, these symptoms become very easily visible and one can understand them very clearly. The heart of one who is highly elevated and grave is compared to gold if one's heart is very soft and gentle. His heart is compared to a cotton swab. When there are there is an ecstatic sensation within the mind, the golden heart or grave, golden Actually, people generally cannot uh, understand such different qualities of mentality. We have read this already. So, moving on. To offer another example, a grave magnanimous heart is compared to a great city and a soft heart to an in insignificant cottage. There may be many lights or even great elephants in the big city, but no one will take big particular notice of them. But when such lights or elephants are seen near a small cottage, everyone can distinctly point them out. A hard heart is compared to a lightning bolt, to gold and to shellac. The lightning bolt is very strong and never becomes soft. Similarly, the hearts of those who are engaged in severe austerities and penances do not become very easily softened. The golden heart becomes melted at high temperature as in ecstatic love and the shellac heart is very easily melted in slight temperatures. The soft heart is the golden heart becomes melted at high temperature and in ecstatic love and the shellac heart is very easily melted in slight temperature. A soft heart is compared to honey, to butter and to nectar and the condition of the mind is compared to sunshine. As honey and butter become melted, even at slight sunshine, soft heart persons become angry. become easily melted sorry not angry easily melted nectar however is by its nature always liquid and the hearts of those who are in pure ecstatic love with krishna are by nature always liquefied just like nectar a pure devotee of krishna is always specifically qualified with nectarian qualifications and sometimes with the qualification of butter and honey on the whole the best heart in heart in any of the different conditions mentioned above. On the whole, the heart in any of the different conditions mentioned above can be melted under certain circumstances just as hard diamond is sometimes melted by a combination of certain chemicals. In the Dhanakeli Kaumudi, it is stated that when love develops in the heart of a devotee, he cannot check the transformation in, in his sentiments. His heart is just like
When uh, love develops in the heart of a devotee, he cannot check the transformation of his sentiments. His heart is just like the ocean at the rising of the moon. When the ebb bride cannot be checked, immediately there must be a movement of high waves. Although in its natural state, the ocean is always grave and unfathomable. When the moon rises, nothing can check the ocean's agitation. Similarly, those who are pure devotees cannot on any account check the movement of their feelings within. Chapter 32 Symptoms of Continuous Ecstasy The continuous ecstasy of love can remain like a powerful king, subduing all temporary manifestations of love as well as any opposing elements of danger. It can be exhibited directly or indirectly and thus ecstatic love can be described as direct or indirect. These symptoms of ecstatic love are possible only when one is fully situated in the transcendental position. Direct ecstatic love can be divided into two groups namely selfish and selfless. When non-contradictory symptoms of ecstatic Love are distinctly manifest. Any contradictory symptoms create a sense of abomination. Contradictory ecstatic love is called selfish. That ecstatic love which can manifest all contradictory and non-contradictory symptoms is called direct selfless love. These selfless symptoms can again be divided into five groups, neutrality, servitude, fraternity, parenthood and conjugal love. Such ecstatic love assumes a particular mode in contact with different objects of love, neutrality. Neutrality can be further subdivided into general, transparent and peaceful. An attraction for Krishna by the people in general or by children cannot take any specific or satisfactory position. It can be manifest sometimes in trembling of the body and changing of the color of the eyes to red, white, etc. Although there is no symptom of any particular affection. One old man was told by a young man, Just see this. See how this child, only three years old, is so jubilant. Simply by seeing Krishna, he is running so swiftly making a tumultuous sound just see this is an instant of neutral ecstatic love in the heart of a child without any specific subdivision due to the different types of attraction for krishna there are different varieties of devotees their symptoms are manifested transparently just like jews it is said that a great devotee brahmana would sometimes address the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Master and sometimes joke with the Lord using different kinds of familiar names, words. Sometimes he would protect the Lord with the filial or is it filial affection. Sometimes he would cry out to the Lord, addressing the Lord as his beloved and sometimes he would meditate on the Lord as the Super Soul. This means that the Brahmanas expressed his ecstatic loving symptoms in different ways at different times, but in each instance, because of ecstatic love, the Brahmana merged himself in the ocean of happiness and became situated in Sometimes joke with the Lord, sometimes using different kinds of familiar words. Sometimes he would protect the Lord with the filial affection. Sometimes he would cry out to the Lord, addressing the Lord as his beloved. And sometimes he would meditate on the Lord as super soul. This means that the Brahmana expresses ecstatic loving symptoms in different ways at different times. But in each instance, because of ecstatic love, the Brahman merged himself in the ocean of happiness and became situated in pure love. Thus he was a transparent medium like a Jew that shows reality in varying colors according to its own nature. When the great sage Narad was glorifying the pastimes of the Lord with his veena, the 
four Kumars headed by Sanak, although merged in the impersonal conception of Brahman, but trembling all over, another devotee once exclaimed, Although I can achieve liberation simply by serving the devotees, my mind is still very much anxious to see the supreme quality personality of Godhead, whose bodily being complexion is just like the dark cloud. When a devotee is so anxious to contact that, So, so anxious to contact the Supreme Personality of Godhead that can also be accepted as a symptom of neutral love. Pure and mixed flavors. Generally, a devotee of Lord Krishna may be placed into one of the three groups. One group consists of those who are completely dependent on the merciful affection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Another group consists of devotees who are dealing with Krishna on the friendly terms and third group consists of those who are dealing with Krishna as his superiors with parental affection. These three classes of devotees gradually develop different relationships of transcendental mellow. With the personality of Godhead, when the attraction for Krishna is based on only one particular humor, that humor is called Kevala or the pure state. One in this pure state of devotional service gradually develops the desire to follow in the footsteps of eternal associate of Krishna. For example, to follow in the footsteps of Rasala, Rasala, the personal attachment of Krishna and Gokul Vrindavan, or to follow Nandan Vrindavan, uh, sorry, or to follow. <coughs> Krishna's friends like Shidama, Shidama and Sudama or to follow Nanda and Yashoda devotees in parenthood. Ecstatic love for Krishna is never manifested directly with Krishna himself. The devotee has to follow in the footsteps of the eternal associates of Krishna in Kola Vrindavan. When transcendental humors in the relationships with Krishna become became become mixed for example when the relationship with krishna in friendship servitorship and parental love becomes mixed together the result is called mixed humor or flavor such mixed such mixed result is called mixed humor or flavor by such devotees as uddhav bhim and mukura the personal attendant of Mother Yashoda. Although devotional humor are sometimes found in mixtures, a particular humor is always found to be prominent and constant factor. That prominent humor is to be accepted as the devotee's main relationship with Krishna. For example, Uddhav is in relationship with Krishna as a friend, but is also visible. Such friendship is called friendship in reverence. The friendship typified by Sri Dhamma and Sudama, however, is the standard of friendship without any tinge of reverence. Subordinate ecstatic, ecstatic love. The devotees who always think of Krishna as a superior are in subordinate ecstatic love to such a devotee. The concept of in inferiority to the uh, uh, typified by Shraman. yeah. The devotees who always think of Krishna as a superior are subordinate ecstatic. Therefore, to each of devotee, the concept of inferiority to the Lord is very important, and the, and it really takes interest in any other kind of transcendental loving humor with the Lord. In the Mukunda Mala Stotra compiled by King Kula Shekara, one of the prayers says, My dear Lord, you are the deliverer of living entities from the hellish condition of materialistic life, but that does not matter to me whether I am elevated to the heavenly platform or remain on this earthly planet or am dispatched to some hellish planet. 
that does not matter at all to me. My only prayer is that at the time of my death, I may simply remember you, your beautiful feet, which are just like lotus flowers fructifying during the autumn season. Friendship. As far as the friendship is concerned, those high-grade devotees who are almost like Krishna are considered to be great devotees in the mode of friendly relations with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. On that friendly platform, there are many different kinds of laughing and joking conversations. An example of such an example of such a friendly relationship with Krishna is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. When Krishna was once thinking, Today, while I was engaged in tending the cows in the pasturing ground of Vrindavan, I went to collect some flowers in a beautiful garden. At that time, my friend, the coward boys, were unhappy even to tolerate a two-minute separation from me. And when they found me, there was comparison between us as who would touch the other first with the flowers on the other hand. One friend criticized Krishna thus, My dear Damodar, although you have been defeated by Sridama and have become sufficiently minimized in strength by a false expression of strength, you have somehow covered your shameful condition of defeat. Parenthood or superiority When Mother Yashoda heard that Krishna's cows were being forcibly moved by the strong servants of Kamsa and that the tender cowherd boys were trying to protect their cows, she began to think, how can I protect these poor boys from the invasion of Kamsa's servants? This is an instance of a superior attitude in a devotee. As soon as Mother Yashoda found her son Krishna returning from the pasturing ground, she immediately began to pat him, touching her fingers to the cheek of the Lord, cheeks of the Lord. Conjugal love even... Above even the humor of love between Krishna and his parents is the relationship of conjugal love. The Lord and the young gopis exhibit this in different ways, glancing, moving the eyebrows, speaking very sweet words and exchanging smiles. There is a statement in Gobind Vilas to this effect. Shrimati Radharani was looking for Krishna very anxiously and almost disappointedly. When there is such an indirect expression of conjugal love, there is smiling, astonishment, enthusiasm, lamentation, anger, dread and sometimes ghastliness. These seven exchanges of conjugal love from form another state of ecstatic love. In a direct relationship of conjugal love, there is laughter, astonishment, chivalry, lamentation, anger and dread, but there is no ghastliness. These expressions are considered to be great reservoirs of pleasure. When these seven kinds of ecstatic loving exchanges are manifested, they attain the status of steadiness by which the state of conjugal love expands. So, let's begin chapter 33. This is the last chapter in last but one, sorry, in part two. Indirect expressions of ecstatic love, laughter. After he had stolen some yogurt from the pots of two gopis, Krishna told one of his gopi friends, My dear beautiful friend, I can take oath that I have not stolen even a drop of yogurt from your pot, but still your friend Radharani is very shamelessly smelling the flavor of my mouth. Kindly forbid her from this devious policy of putting her face near mine. When Krishna was speaking like this, the friends of Radharani could not check their laughter. This is an instance of laughter in ecstatic love, astonishment. When once Brahma was watching all the cows and the cowherd boys dressed in yellow garments and decorated with valuable jewels, the boys were expanding their four arms and were being worshipped by many hundreds of other Brahmas. All the cowherd boys began to express their joyfulness for being with Krishna, the supreme Brahman. At that time, Brahma showed his astonishment by exclaiming, what am I seeing here? This is an instance of astonishment and ecstatic love, chivalry. On the bank of the Yamuna once there was the cracking, crackling sound of the dry leaves, giggling from the covered boys and thundering from the sky. Shridama was tightening his belt to fight with Krishna, the conqueror of the demon Naga. This is an instance of chivalry in ecstatic love, lamentation. In the 10th canto, 7th chapter, verse 25 of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a description of 
Krishna's being taken away by the whirlwind demon Pranavrita. As Krishna was being thus carried up into the sky, all the gopis began to cry aloud. Aloud, they approached Mother Yashoda, stating that they could not find the son of Nanda. He had been taken away by a whirlwind. This is an instance of lamentation in ecstatic love. When Krishna was fighting with Kaliya, Mother Yashoda exclaimed, Krishna is now entrapped within the hoods of the Kaliya snake, and yet I am not tattered to pieces. So I must admit, how wonderful is the preserving power of this material body. This is another instance of lamentation in ecstatic love, anger. When Jatila, the mother of Abhimanyu, saw Krishna wearing a necklace, she could understand that the jeweled ornament had been given to him by Radharani. She therefore became absorbed in anger and began to move her eyebrows, expressing her anger in ecstatic love. Ghastliness. There is a statement by Yamunacharya to this effect. Since I have begun to enjoy these transcendental exchanges of love, which are always near, newer and newer, whenever I remember the pleasure of past sex life, my lips curl and I wish to spit on the idea. This is an instance of ecstatic love in ghastliness. Bread. One old devotee said, My dear Lord, when we are away from you, we become so anxious to see you again and there is great misery in our lives. But when, then when we do see you, there immediately comes the fear of separation under the circumstances both when we see you and when we do not see you, we are subjected to different kinds of tribulation. This is an instance of a contradictory mixture of ecstatic love for Krishna. Such ecstatic love is palatable and expert critics have compared such ecstatic love to a mixture of curd sugar candy and a little black pepper. The combined taste is very palatable. Now the last chapter of this part 2 is chapter 34, The Nectar of Devotion. The particular type of ecstatic loving sentiment that develops within the heart of a particular devotee is considered to be vibhav, and the resultant manifestations such as moving of the eyebrows, fear, astonishment and smiling, which have been explained herein before, are called anubhav. The different causes for developing anubhav and vibhav are called steady ecstasy or sanchari bhav. Whenever there is a recitation of poetry or a dramatic play on the different pastimes of Krishna, the audience develops different kinds of transcendental loving service for the Lord. They enjoy different types of vibhav, anubhav and sanchari bhav. No one while remaining on the material platform should discuss these different descriptions of bhav and anubhav by quoting different statements from this transcendental literature. Such manifestations are displays of the transcendental pleasure potency of the Lord. One should simply try to understand that on the spiritual platform there are many varieties of reciprocal love. Such loving exchanges should never be considered to be material in the Mahabharat Uddyam Parva. It is warned that things which are unconceivable should not be subjected to arguments. Actually, the transactions of the spiritual world are inconceivable to us in our present state of life. Great liberated souls like Rupa Goswami and others have tried to give us some hints of transcendental activities in the spiritual world. But on the whole, these transactions will remain inconceivable to us at the present moment. Understanding the exchanges of transcendental loving service with Krishna is possible only when one is actually in touch with the pleasure potency of the Supreme Lord. In this connection, Sri Rupa Goswami gives an example of the clouds in the sky. The clouds in the sky arise from the ocean and when the clouds become water again and fall to the ground, they glide back to the ocean. Thus, the pleasure potency of Krishna is compared to the ocean. The pure devotee is the pleasure-possessing cloud and when he is filled with transcendental loving service, then he can bestow his mercy as a downpour of rain and the pleasure potency returns to the ocean of Krishna.
direct and indirect attraction for Krishna, transcendental pleasure derived from devotional service can be divided into two groups, direct devotional service and indirect devotional service. Direct devotional service is divided into five transcendental humors or flavors and indirect devotional service is divided into seven transcendental humors. Direct devotional services are as follows, neutrality, servitude, fraternity, paternity and conjugal love. Indirect devotional services are divided into laughter, compassion, anger, chivalry, dread, astonishment and ghastliness. Devotional service can therefore be divided into 12 types, each of which has a different color. The color are white. Colors are white, multicolored, orange, red, light green, gray, yellow, off-whitish, smoky, pink, black, and cloudy. The 12 different kinds of transcendental humors are controlled by different incarnations of God, such as Kapila, Madhava, Upendra, Nirsimha, Nanda, Nandana, Balaram, Burma, Kalki, Raghav, Bhargav, Varah, and Matsya. Sustenance, manifestation, Expansion, reflection and lamentation are the five visible symptoms in exchanges of ecstatic love. The test of devotional service can therefore be made in terms of these five symptoms. In the devotional service of neutrality, there is sustenance. In chivalrous devotional service, there is expansion. In compassionate devotional service, there is reflection in angry devotional service, there is lamentation and so on. An apparently pitiable condition in devotional service may appear distressing to the inexperienced student, but the feelings of the devotee in this pitiable condition are considered to be ecstatic by the expert devotees. For example, the subject matter of Ramayana is sometimes considered pitiable and distressing to the heart. But actually, that is not the fact. The Ramayana narrates how Lord Ram was sent to the forest by his father, just when he was going to be enthroned. After Lord Rama's departure, Maharaj Dashrath, his father died in the forest. His wife Sita Dev was kidnapped by Ravan and there was a great war. When Sita Dev was finally delivered from the clutches of Ravan, Ravan's whole family and kingdom and Ravan himself were vanquished. When Sita Devi came home, she was tried by fire and after some days she was again banished to the forest. All these subjects in the Ramayana seem very pitiable, but they may appear very distressing to the reciter, but actually they are not. Otherwise, why would Hanuman, the great devotee of Lord Ramchandra, read daily about the activities of Lord Ramchandra, as described in the Ramayana itself? The fact is that any of the above mentioned 12 transcendental humors of devotional service, everything is transcendental, transcendentally pleasing. Shri Rupa Goswami moans in this connection for persons who are in the fire of false renunciation, the dry speculative habit and who neglect devotional service. Persons who are attached to the ritualistic ceremonies recommended in the Vedas and to the impersonal Brahman cannot relish the transcendental pleasure of the devotional service, Shri Rupa Goswami advises. Therefore, that devotees who have already tasted the nectar of devotion be very careful to protect devotional service from such dry speculators, formal ritualistic elevationists and impersonal sal salvationists. Devotees should protect their valuable jewel of spiritual love from the clutches of thieves and burglars. In other words, a pure devotee should never should not describe devotional service and its different analytical aspects to dry speculators and false renouncers. Those who are not devotees can never achieve the benefits of devotional love. For them, the subject of devotional service is always very difficult to understand. Only persons who have dedicated their lives unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can relish the real nectar of devotion. When one transcends the status of ecstatic love and thus becomes situated on the highest platform of pure goodness, one is understood to have cleansed the heart of all material contamination. In that pure stage of life, one can taste this nectar and this tasting capacity is technically called rasa or transcendental mood. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta summary study of the second division of the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu in the matter of general devotional service. 
So thank you for joining. Hare Om Tatsyat, Hare Krishna. Tomorrow we will begin part 3 of Nectar of Devotion from chapter 35, Neutral Love of God. <laughs>